What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut, the online course that helps you get rid of SIBO so you can get back to eating those healthy foods you love without the fear of bloating and discomfort. Today's video is going to be a complete overview of hydrogen sulfide SIBO and include recent data on this condition from a group of case studies. Hydrogen sulfide SIBO is a lesser studied type of SIBO. There is not nearly the amount of data or information on it compared to hydrogen dominant SIBO or intestinal methanogen overgrowth, which used to be called methane dominant SIBO. This video is going to cover what hydrogen sulfide SIBO is, what the symptoms are, ways to diagnose hydrogen sulfide SIBO, and some potential treatment options. So what is hydrogen sulfide SIBO? Let's start with hydrogen sulfide gas. It is a naturally occurring gas in the digestive tract in small amounts. However, having too much can cause a lot of problems. Hydrogen sulfide SIBO involves a specific type of bacteria bacteria called a sulfide producing bacteria and two of the main bacteria that are the sulfovibrio piger and fusobacterium species. These bacteria consume hydrogen gas and then use that to produce the hydrogen sulfide. And now let's talk about symptoms of hydrogen sulfide SIBO. And to do this, we're going to use this 2023 hydrogen sulfide SIBO case registry first. It is the largest registry to date for this condition. This case registry is data from 123 patients that were presumed to have hydrogen sulfide SIBO. I say presumed because in this case registry, there were multiple methods used of diagnosing hydrogen sulfide SIBO and some were better than others. However, we can't assume that any of them are 100% accurate. I'll explain more about this in the diagnosis section later. And then real quick, I'll mention this case registry does have a disclaimer. It reports this is new medical research that has yet to be evaluated and so should not be used to guide clinical practice. Do with this statement what you like. In terms of simple Symptoms, though, this registry found that the most common symptoms were bloating at 77%, constipation at 50.8%, and abdominal pain also at 50.8%. These three symptoms are pretty common in all types of SIBO. This chart, though, shows the other symptoms that came up on the registry. The first portion of this chart, the ones on top that are not in bold, these are basically regular symptoms of SIBO that a lot of different people would experience, regardless of the type of SIBO that you have. So as you can see on the top, is there's obviously bloating, abdominal pain, and constipation, which I mentioned. Not far behind, we have fatigue, flatulence, which is farting, diarrhea, nausea, and burping. These are the symptoms in this case registry that people with hydrogen sulfide SIBO experience. As I mentioned, this top section is the broad SIBO symptoms grouping, whereas below this bottom section that is in bold, these are more symptoms that are more typical only to hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So sulfur smelling flatulence, if you didn't have an overgrowth of hydrogen sulfide, this probably would not be the case. Just feeling toxic in general, this is definitely subjective, but something that a lot of people clearly reported. Having skin issues, adverse sulfur food or supplement reactions. This may involve cruciferous vegetables or various types of meat and fish. Generalized myalgia, which is muscle pains. Urinary symptoms, photo or phonosensitivity, which is sensitivity to light or sounds. Paresthesia, which is that numbness kind of pins and needles feeling that you can get on your skin. And then sulfur smelling burps. As you can see, huge Huge variety of symptoms, not just digestive symptoms. And hydrogen sulfide SIBO also seems to have some of these very unique symptoms that the other types of SIBO do not have. Now on to diagnosis. In general, in the SIBO community, using what is known as a breath test, understood that this is the standard for diagnosing SIBO. This case registry looked at things a little bit differently, and per the clients in the study, they accepted a diagnosis of hydrogen SIBO if they met one or more of the three criteria, which were number one, having an elevated hydrogen sulfide sulfide gas reading on a breath test. As of January 2024, when I'm making this video, a test called the Trio Smart Breath Test is the only one available that can test for hydrogen sulfide gas. Way number two is what's known as an empiric diagnosis. This basically means that the patients in the case registry were diagnosed by their physician based on having the hydrogen sulfide type symptoms that we talked about previously. And the third way is by having a flat line breath test. Clearly, there's not much to see if you look at a flat line test. It's exactly how it sounds. You may look at this and think this means absolutely nothing, but if we take a little bit of a closer look and think about what this means, if you're getting a flatline result on a breath test, that means that the test is not testing for hydrogen sulfide. This test is only measuring for hydrogen gas and methane gas. Normally, after about 120 minutes of doing the breath test, if you're using lactulose, that lactulose enters the large intestine and you'll typically have some sort of an increase in your hydrogen gas level throughout the last 60 minutes of the test. 
past, methanogens in the digestive tract also compete to use this hydrogen gas. So it's sort of like diagnosis by process of elimination because if we're measuring for hydrogen and methane and there's literally no methane or hydrogen showing up on the test, even when we are expecting hydrogen, this may indicate the presence of hydrogen sulfide gas. This is a flatline diagnosis and some practitioners use it to diagnose hydrogen sulfide SIBO. And then per these case studies, interestingly, the flatline diagnose was most associated with adequate treatment response at 78%, whereas empiric diagnosis was at a 43% treatment response and a hydrogen sulfide gas diagnosis, assuming this is by the TRIO SMART test, was at 62%. This basically means that of the people that were treated in these case reports, the ones that were diagnosed with flatline diagnosis seem to do better and feel better after the treatments. This doesn't necessarily mean that a flatline diagnosis is the preferred way to diagnose hydrogen sulfide SIBO. This is just what the data found in these case reports. And then one more final interesting point on diagnosis. We talked about breath testing, flatline diagnosis, and looking at empiric symptoms. What about stool testing? So in checking for disulfo, vibrio, piger, and fusobacterium species on stool testing, 21 cases reported hydrogen sulfide levels on breath tests, and six of which also reported having conducted a microbiome stool analysis. So we have six people to work with here. Of these six cases, one sample had elevation of disulfo vibrio piger, and one sample had elevation in fusobacterium species on their stool test. So two out of six cases show that they had one of these bacteria that produce hydrogen sulfide gas. Six samples is not a lot, and two out of six makes it difficult to know what to think of this. I think a lot more studies with a lot more people would be needed before you could actually make a true determination on whether a stool test could be helpful for diagnosing this condition. Now on to treatment of hydrogen sulfide sulfide SIBO. For the 2023 case registry of the 131 patients mentioned earlier, of the most common interventions used, only a low sulfur diet at 73% and bismuth at 76% were significantly associated with treatment response. And now looking at this table of the different treatments, and just to clarify adequate response, this was considered to be at least a 50% reduction in symptoms for it to be an adequate response. So bismuth, 76% of people said that they had this low sulfur diet at 73%. Oregano, which I'm assuming is oil of oregano, also was 68%, which seems pretty good. And interestingly, rifaximin, which is the main antibiotic used for SIBO, did not seem to be as effective as the other treatments. In conclusion, hydrogen sulfide SIBO is a type of SIBO that hasn't been researched as much as the other two. It is associated with a variety of different symptoms, ones that are commonly caused in other types of SIBO, such as bloating, constipation, and abdominal discomfort. But then hydrogen sulfide SIBO also has a big set of its unique own symptoms that the other types of SIBO don't seem to have, such as sulfur smelling flatulence, a general toxic feeling, and having more adverse reactions when eating high sulfur containing food or supplements. There's still not a lot of options for the diagnosis of hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Currently, there is the TRIO SMART test, which directly measures the hydrogen sulfide gas, but a flatline diagnosis on a breath test and just diagnosing empirically which symptoms the patient has have also been ways that hydrogen sulfide SIBO has been diagnosed. And then as far as treatments, this case registry found that bismuth, which is the active ingredient in Pepto-Bismol, there's also formulations that are a little bit different that are more gentle on the stomach and digestive tract. And a low sulfur diet also seems to be effective in eliminating some of the symptoms of hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Oregano showed decent improvement in symptoms in this study. And then lastly, rifaximin, which is a cornerstone antibiotic for SIBO, did not seem to be as effective in this case registry. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please subscribe to my channel for more related content. I post a new full-length video every Monday and YouTube shorts throughout the week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.